Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the PR2400 dual beam bike headlight. Raven's PR series of headlights are affordable and bright bike lights that feature anti-glare lens design. The PR2400 is the brightest headlight currently in the lineup with an impressive 2400 lumen output. As far as packaging, you have a nice cardboard box, a glossy representation of the headlight, then all the specs printed on it, along with all the run times and modes. Go ahead and take this out of the box and go over the specs. So retail price on this is $179.95. It has 2400 lumens output with an 8000 milliamp internal battery to support that output. This has their dual beam design. So you have five LEDs with this nice diffused inner one for road cycling and then the big floodlights for mountain biking. You have an OLED display as well, which is really cool. So you can see your runtime your mode, and everything you need on the screen directly on there. It also has a wireless remote, so you can put the control closer to your handlebar. And then you have USB Type-C charging, as well as power bank functionality with a USB in and USB out ports. As far as what comes with the light, you can see you have quite a few accessories. We have the headlight itself, which is pretty big. It's an all-in-one design. You have the wireless remote with the rubber mount, so you just wrap this around your handlebar. The instruction manual, along with the warranty card. We have a handlebar mount, and you do have to be careful, this is specific to the larger PR2400. This is not compatible with the other models. You have a USB Type-C charging cable. Again, it's always nice to see USB Type-C. Nice modern interface. And then you can see again, we have a wider strap for the remote. And then a little shim here, along with a bolt and a little Allen key to install it onto your bike. Now let's take a look at the weight of the headlight setup. So just the headlight comes out to 279 grams. The handlebar mount with the bolt attached, that's a lightweight 28 grams. And then the remote with the mounting strap, that's only 16. The Raven PR2400 is the largest light in the PR lineup with a rounded rectangular design and a metal body. So it's a pretty hefty light. You have a big 8,000 milliamp battery on the inside and it's all in one, so all self-contained. You have a black accent along the front and then a black accent along the rear and then this gray anodized finish along the center. There's also this glossy black strip down the center, almost like a piano trim on a car that connects the two. What's interesting is though, even though you have these exposed hardware, so you can see the bolt heads on the front and rear, the light has an IPX8 rating, which means it actually operates underwater. So it is watertight and can handle any weather. One of the cool features about this light though is the lens. So to achieve 2400 lumens, you actually have five LEDs and you have dual mode. So you have a center LED, which has a diffuse design. So it has horizontal and vertical diffusers. You can see that if you look up closely, you have vertical lines and horizontal, and that creates a T-beam shape. So if I turn the beam on, you can see there's more light here rather than just having a cone shape with a hot section in the center. So it definitely helps reduce glare, but you still do have some glare. It's not as good as an FTV ZO light or something with a sharp beam cutoff, but definitely a move in the right direction. It makes it more friendly, especially if you're doing a lot of urban riding with other riders or pedestrians around you. Then in the high mode, everything turns on, so you get the full wide beam with that center beam on as well. So pretty nice setup, gives a lot of versatility. The other cool thing about this light is you get a OLED display, so you don't really have to guess how much battery you have. It actually shows you the exact amount on the bottom, a battery gauge on the top right, and then the mode label on the top left. On the screen here, it looks flickery, but in real life, it's a nice high contrast screen with white text on a black background. Underneath that, you also have two icons. You have the beam icon on the left, and then if I go to high beam mode, you get that blue high beam that also activates. So you always know what mode you're in, as well as the battery status with a quick glance. The user interface is also really simple. Top button with the larger button turns it on and off with a hold. Bottom one cycles through your mode. You do have flash at the same level with the low beam, so you do have to quickly cycle through that. If you hold the bottom button, it'll give you the max output mode. So no matter what mode you're in, you get the max output, the 2400 lumen. 
And then if you hold the top button, it'll turn the light off again. So pretty simple to use. And the two buttons are actually repeated. All the same interactions are repeated with the wireless remote. So with this one, you have the same two button design, cycling through the modes, holding it to get max output. So pretty simple. And then the top button cycles through the low mode or the high mode. It's a pretty simple remote as well with just a rubber strap hook. It lets you put the controls directly next to your hand, a little bit closer to the grips. The other thing about this light is that it does have two ports, which is a little bit interesting. So you have two covers. You have a USB in for charging it. So it's USB type C, which is nice to see. And then a standard USB out if you wanted to charge other devices. So when you're not using the light for cycling, you can actually use this as a power bank by just plugging directly into it. The rubber covers are pretty simple too. You can see nice and flush. And then with mounting, you do have their proprietary mount. Unfortunately, it's not a Garmin or a GoPro style. Instead, it's their standard tab design. So you can see this slides in and then locks into place. You pull down the lever and then slide the light away. This is different than the other Raven lights, so it's a little bit wider. And you can notice this is thicker than the other models as this is a heavier light. You do have 10 degree rotation side to side with the mount. So you have a little bit of adjustability. And then you can see it's a very simple mount with a hook design. So single pivot with a one bolt. So pretty easy to install once you have it installed. You just take the light off by sliding it out. It would have been nice to see GoPro or Garmin and you do have to be aware that you can't mount this upside down as you won't be able to see the screen. And then the anti-glare design will create more glare as it'll focus the light upward. So be sure to mount this up right in the way it's intended. In terms of output modes, there are actually eight different modes. You have a low beam, which just runs the center LED and then high beam, which turns all five LEDs on. You can see you have very low modes and eco mode. Then as you go up, you have 500 lumen with five and a half hour runtime. 900 lumen for the high mode and 3.4 hours, which is pretty good runtime. So even if you're doing longer rides, you got power. Rapid flash here is 500 lumens and great for urban riding. Then with the high beam mode, you have three modes. You have low, medium, high. You can see it goes from 600 to 1200, all the way to 2400 with that one and a half hour runtime, which is not bad given the size of the battery. The great thing about this light again, though, is the dual beam design. So here's the low beam and you can see you have plenty of options. You do have to watch out for that flash mode. So when you're cycling through, you want to make sure you cycle through it quickly as it can be distracting. The beam pattern on it's pretty nice, so it's wide and diffused with enough throw to see down the trail and still see things around you. If you do a lot of mountain biking or gravel riding or really a dark trail, you can hit the high beam mode and you can see it really lights everything up. The first time you switch, it always goes to the 2400 lumen mode. So then you can back it down if you want a little bit more runtime. The nice thing about this is a good blend of that spot and then the flood beam so you can see in front of you and again see around you. This obviously has a lot more glare in this mode so better for areas where it's more rural or you don't have a lot of people around you while the road mode has that lower glare setting which is nice. It's not as good as the sharp beam cutoff lights on the market but it's a good blend. It's a simple lens design and gives you the versatility with less glare than a traditional light. As you can see, we've actually reviewed the PR2000 in our previous video, so pretty similar. You can see size-wise, the 2400 is obviously bigger. It has a different screen and a just larger body overall. You can also see that mount difference is a little bit thinner, so you do have to be careful when you're buying the mount to make sure you get the specific one. Otherwise, very similar design, but just a little bit smaller as it has a bigger battery on the 2400. So other lights like the Magic Shine Ulti 2000, so it also has a OLED display. So very similar, white on black, a dual beam setup, but instead of having the nice focused one, it just has a little bit more shrouding. So you get the combination of the more centered one and a more diffused one. But a little bit more complicated interface, you have a single press to cycle through everything. And then this does have a cartridge battery, so this whole battery slides out. And you can replace the battery while this one's all integrated, which is a nice feature. I also like the DRLs on the Magic Shine, so you can use this during daytime. And they use very little battery, so this is something you can ride with for multiple hours instead of just a low mode. Magic Shine also has their RN1500, so you can see smaller overall because it just has less capacity. 
and it does has diffusers, but a more simple, it just has the horizontal diffusers and a simple one button interface with a battery checker and no LED screen. If you do a lot of urban riding, you probably want something with more of a sharp beam cutoff. This is the Trek Commuter Pro. And you can see it actually has a simple interface that connects to the tail light. So if you have a Bontrager tail light, you can actually connect that and you can see the beam has much more of a sharp cutoff. So you don't have any glare while you still have glare on something like the Raven lights. So you can really see that difference here. This one really doesn't have anything above the top line. Well, the Raveman still does, so a little bit of a sacrifice here. You can also see the side visibility on the Raveman is not very good as the lens is inset, while something like the Trek actually has these side markers built directly into it. There's also a lot more STVZO style lights, like the Evo 1700 from Magic Shine. So you can see a very cool beam shape. So instead of having the cone shape, you can see a nice sharp, and when you put it horizontally, you can see a nice sharp beam cut off. Different form factor, and you can see the run times on this are a little bit lower than the PR2400. So if you're doing more mountain biking, you probably want something with higher output like this, but with the versatility of that dual beam. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Raveman PR2400. What we like about it is that you have a dual beam design, which means you can use this on the road and for off-road riding. You also have a nice OLED display, which shows you which mode you're on and the battery status as both the remaining time and a battery gauge, so it's really easy to tell how much battery is left. You also have a simple user interface with a wireless remote, so it's easy to operate as you have two buttons, and then the remote that duplicates all the functionality. In terms of negatives, the light does have a proprietary mount instead of a Garmin or GoPro design, so you are limited to how you can mount this. And also the inset lens lacks side visibility, so if you're doing urban riding, you're not going to be really visible from higher angles. Taking everything into account, we give the light a 9.0 out of 10. It's a powerful all-in-one headlight that has enough versatility for both road and then mountain bike use. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.